ko tui tapu ingoa. I'm a mama to five girls and bestie to my hubby Comrie. He mua, he prihimana, he kaimahi taua moana, he kaya ko zomba hoki ahau. I love a challenge and I'm now on a journey to learn how to hunt. So far so good. I think it's about 10 metres. Ki te hia hia ahau, ki te rapu kai ora, mā taku whānau. I want to show my girls that wahine can hunt too. Can't do this in the city. Join me each week as I meet the best hunters, go to their secret spots. <laughs> ah, ka haere, ki o rātou wahi whakangau i Aotearoa. Kāti, hoa ke tātou. Kia ora ite iwi, welcome to Hunting with Tui. Here I am in Wanganui, beautiful place here, with Comrie and with my mate Dave Benfell from Sands. Kia ora Dave. Kia ora. So Sands, what is what's Sands all about? Uh, I started a charity and the premise of it is is to help those who have served in the Army, the Navy or the Air Force. doesn't matter if they deployed anywhere or not, but all I want to do is get us together and get us outdoors and learning and uh, just experience the, the amazing wilderness that we have here in New Zealand. Awesome. Um, and, and you're part of that as well with your service through the Navy. Um, and yeah, really pleased to be helping you along this journey as you learn how to hunt and gather. Thank you. So we're, today we've got the Air Force here, we've got the Army here, and we've got the Navy brothers here. Go the putts! <laughs> awesome, so Dave, what's first? Okay, so the way this is designed is to basically give people a baseline knowledge on, on how to hunt and gather so that you have the confidence when you lead from here. I know you already advanced a little bit on your journey, which is really cool, um, but if I can add to that or we can help you out along that journey, that's, that's basically what we're set up to do. Now we're going to go onto our shooting and we're going to brush that up and make sure that you achieve the number one goal, which is to put your animal down with one shot um, as cleanly as you can. So we need to make sure everybody's shooting's up to scratch first. So we're going to spend a few hours on the range here getting that all up to scratch and then we're off hunting for the afternoon. Nice. Kua puta mātou ki te pupuhi. Mā Dave mātou e a rotake. Kei te āhua a mai mai a hau. Kei te whakaro nui mai e tahi. Hau ngā tērā, he rawe te noho tahi me e nei tangata. Well, I've just recently become a member of SANS and I love the kaupapa. I, I joined the Navy when I was 17, um, fresh out of school and I spent five and a half years in the Navy. I was posted to three ships and it's the best career I've ever had. It was a really good foundation for me as a young 17 year old to learn some life skills, to travel the world, make some really good friends who I still keep in touch with today and to be a part of a real neat whanau. You guys want to close in, but we're going to start with the 22s. Firstly, because there's no recoil with these, and we can get our fundamentals right. And our fundamentals are really important, okay? No matter what rifle we're shooting, they are always roughly the same. Nā Dave mātou i ako, ki ngā kōrero haumaru mo te maupū. A rā te āhua o te pupuri i te pū, i te pupuhitanga, te tero tero me te ngā o te manawa. He rawe a Dave ki te āta whakamārama i ngā kōrero nei. Okay, now I'm looking at the deer, the crosshairs is moving up and down as I breathe, breathe in. How I'm trying to relax. There's the crosshairs there, okay, I pause my breath, I could find now, relax, breathe again. I'm happy with this and I'm gonna take the shot. Safety catch is off. I rest my finger lightly on the trigger. Keep breathing, crosshairs touches the target and I release the trigger. Are you taking it all in? Kei te mōhi o a kamri ki i nei kōrero, he prihimana ia, a kua roa ia, e ako ana ki te mau pū. E ngari, he kaupapa hau tēnei ki au. Kāti, kua tai mai ki au i nai anei. Can you see the bottom right hand edge of the white A4 paper? Okay, you can rest your finger on the trigger now when you're ready. Nice. Oh, it's self-loading, eh? So. It is, yeah. Nice and smooth. Breathing. Do you see where your shots are going? No. That was really good. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that was God. really good. I was just aiming. And maybe exaggerate your breathing a little bit, because exaggerating is going to help you to compensate for it. Okay. You know, the adrenaline that is good for hunting is bad for shooting. Yeah. Okay, next one, we'll, we'll move back after this and we'll be using your rifle. Okay. 
He pai ngā kupu āwhina mai a Dave, a i pai te timatanga, he oi anō, he mahi tonu tāku. Ko te wero i nai anei, me pupuhi i a tātou ake pū. So what we're doing here, it's a 200 metre range, and there's a gong down there over in the bank. So I've got Comrie to go first, because I'm a bit nervous, so if I can watch him do it first, then I, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to... What is it? Bang the dong? The gong? Hi, he pūkinga a Comrie. Tui, you're up. No pressure. So it's my turn now, I'm a bit nervous. Got my uh, ex-comrades watching me, but Dave, he's uh, the master Jedi, so that's what's making me more nervous. The pressure's on. And plus, I've got to show Conway up, so. One up the chamber now? Yep, that's fine. Good hit. So um, the target that you're aiming at, the gong, is roughly the same dimensions as what we call the boiler room of the deer, so the heart-lung area. So as long as you're hitting that size target at any range, then you should be making uh, a good clean kill on your animal. So in the wool shed now, and Dave's going to teach Comrie and I uh, the best shot placement on a deer, uh, what to avoid, and hopefully he's got some good examples to um, teach me so I can understand the whole process of how to place your shots. So thanks Dave for teaching me today and Comrie. I think Comrie already knows this, but for me I just need uh, more of a lesson. Because sometimes I don't listen to what Comrie says. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> your aim as a hunter is to put the animal down in one shot as quickly as you can. And that should be every hunter's goal. But you've got this shot here, which is the popular boiler room shot, which I would call a low shoulder shot. And then I've also got the, included the high shoulder shot here. Now they are different because the high shoulder shot in this area here is a central nervous system shot. You're going to shock the spinal cord again, you're going to drop the animal really quickly and death will follow quickly after that. This shot down here, okay, you're going to hit the heart and the lungs. Um, now that is a lethal shot but what a lot of people don't realise is when you hit the heart and the lungs the animal is most likely going to run and I have seen animals run as far as 100 metres. So if you're in a bush situation, Obviously, you need to get a really good idea of where the animal's gone and really track it. Hopefully, there's a blood trail as well. So this is actually the preferable shot down in here um, for, for, for beginners. It gives you the most margin of error if you don't place your shot carefully. Um, so yeah, that one there is ideal. And if you go a little bit too high and you might accidentally get a high shoulder, that's all good. You're still going to end up with a dead there. A little bit left or right, you're still going to collect the heart or the lungs. There is a common mistake that I see beginners make. So um, I'm going to get my glamorous assistant here. If you just kneel down in front of us there. What, what sort of deal would I be? I'd be like... Fellow. Fellow A jolly good fellow. <laughs> what I see a lot of beginners do is they don't take into account when the animal is on an angle and it's quartering. Okay, so if Conway, if you just face towards where my hand is here, and you're still in the same place firing from here. Now that position that I told you was the good spot just in here, if the deer is now quartering and you don't realise it, you think it's side on and you leave that shot placement there, if you watch this here, you look at where that bullet path is. Yeah. So all of the heart lungs in this area here, you've skimmed it and you've missed it and that is a nasty shot for a deer and no hunter wants to make that yeah. shot, okay? Um, and the same goes if you turn towards me now, Conry. So the deer is quartering and you haven't picked up on that, so yeah. you leave that same spot which was there yeah. and you're firing from there. So now yeah. you've missed it again. It's actually quite good to see that visually. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah, that Thank is you good. No, no problems at Thank all. Thank you, my assistant. So there's a lot to consider, angles, but I feel that I'm a little bit more confident now because I've seen the visual of this handsome looking deer over here. Um, so thank you, Dave. I, I really appreciate that. No problem at all. So this is Hamish from Muddy Waters Hunting and he's going to be my guide today. And he is going to teach us, Comrie and I, how to do volley firing. So what is volley firing? So volley firing is uh, synchronised firing between, you know, two, three, four hunters. The idea being behind it, um, you know, if you've put the hard yards in to get into a, a mob of deer and there, there's a few of them there, to maximise your chances of, of everyone getting good, clean kill shots, you want a synchronised shot or, or volley fire. We practice with a, with a countdown and we try and get everyone to release their shots at the same time. 
so that we don't have deer running everywhere and people haven't got their shot off yet. Mm. Um, so yeah, done properly, very effective. Yeah. Cool. It actually brings back memories. I went to Gallipoli with the Navy and we were standing there and we had our weapons ready to do the, the Guard of Honour volley and uh, I actually balls it up. Oh no. Which was a bit embarrassing. It went boom boom and I was the boom at the end. Oh no. So you were that um, person. yeah, I was that one, sorry, so hopefully I'm not gonna be that one today. Yeah, cool, no worries. Well we can practice all we like and cool. we'll get it right. Awesome, sounds good. Let's do it, eh? Sweet. Uh, we've got our animals picked out over there and we're ready to let a volley shot off. Okay, so we'll go safety's off. Okay, guide has control. Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, a little bit slow there, eh? A little slow, this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you were good, you got it. Well. <laughs> well. So, so as I'm, basically, as I'm saying one, that's when you want to be releasing that shot. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. So we've just finished our akoranga. Now we're going to put the mātauranga to the test and go for our first hunt in Whanganui. Looking forward to it. You ready, Hamish? What's the code? Let's go. Kei te takiwā o Whanganui mātou e whai ana i tētahi akoranga whaiwhai. Kei tētahi pāmu nā kararehe e whai ana. He pai tēnei kia waia ai koe ki te tai ao whaiwhai. Kei te ārahi mai a Hamish i a mātou, he kai aru mōhi o ia e ngākau nui ana ki tēnei mahi. Yeah, so down where that fence line disappears behind that saddle, just on the left hand side you can see the little speckles. Yeah, that's ultimately where we're going to end up. So we know there's deer out there. If we stay at this end, they can't smell us. We're far too far away from them to know what we are, so we can just kind of walk around. He whenua pukepuke tēnei, kā roa te haere i tētahi wahi ki tētahi wahi kei te āta titiro hoki mātou. Kaore i roa, kā kitea e tahi tia. Nā wai i hiko i noa, kā tahuri mātou ki te whakamomo ka. So, do we do? Just over the bridge there, so we're going to go down the bridge. If we're about 800 metres, OK, away. Te kaumāri ma meneti e muri mai ko a tata ki te wahi e pupuhi ai mātou. Probably within 300 yards of those deer now. So from here on out, it's super, super quiet. We're just going to make our way down here and up into that little saddle just there. Then we come up over the top, nice and low, low, lowest silhouette possible. Okay, because they will possibly pick up on the movement. Ka heke iho mātou i te hiwi e whakamomoka tonu ana. I mua i te pikinga ki runga ka kōrero anō mātou. I te mahere ki a Hamish. Do you know my shoulder shot? Yes. I would aim it a little bit higher. Yes. Except just, just about that much higher than normal. Just so that bullet angles down through the vitals instead of going under. OK. OK. So, and we'll do a volley fire. All good. second from the right that's offering a really nice shot and if you want to go in on the far left five four three two one oh yeah kua hinga te tia o komri engari tāku kua oma ke i te tutunga o te puehu i kite rā ahau i te one one irere ana we'll go down and we'll check and we'll just see where those other ones go because I thought I heard two hits but it can be deceiving when you're in a basin like this, you know, the, mm. the echo of a bullet hitting the ground can sound, you know, similar to a hit. E hara, kua u te kariri o komri. Tēnā koe, is this what you call a spiker? Yep. Oh. So that's before. his first growth. Yeah. Be beautiful yeah. E eating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he will be. He'll be a lovely deer to eat. He's, he's a crossbred. Um, he has got some of the good DNA in him. Yeah. But the reason we took him out is, is this. So he's got very, very short spikes. Okay. And he's got very small coronets. Yeah. Okay, so the coronet is the base there. So we, we want to be seeing like a big 
coronet, and we want to be seeing spikes up here. Okay. So he's he's never really going to he's never going to be a trophy. Yeah. So we take him out. We don't want him breeding. Yeah. We'd rather leave the breeding to our good guys. Okay. So he goes out as a meat animal. Ka tere whakaahua ngia. Perfect. Cheers, guys. Ka tahi, ka tahuria Hamish, ki te mahi i te tia. Bend it back. Oh, this course is just perfect for someone like um, Tui who's just starting out on her journey. You know, I only offer her so much and a lot of the time she doesn't really take my advice. He akoranga ano tēnei, mā Hamish mātou, i ako ki ana tikanga tuaki. Whakairi hoki, me whai rākau kaha, me maru a mā te hau e mahi tana mahi. Sweet. Lovely. You can see all that heat coming out of them already. There's no sign of blood, so I did miss. But Katie Pai, it's all about hunting. This is what hunting's about. You miss some, or well, you miss a lot, and you get some. Off to the next lesson. So this part that we're going to go over here is about observing the animals, glassing and learning a bit about animal behaviour. What being a good hunter is about is being able to feel what's going on around you because that connects you to what the animals are feeling and once you know that, you know where to look and you spend less wasted time looking at areas where the animals aren't going to be. Okay, so we came over the ridge there and you can feel it a bit here, but what was it like on the other side of the ridge? And you guys, what, do you, what, did, you, what did you feel? Paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was cold. Exactly. It was absolutely freezing cold on the other side of this ridge. We're just on the top of the ridge now, but if you sit down, you'll feel straight away the wind dies and you're warm. So the deer are out here 24 7. They don't have a warm bed to go to or, or, or any shelter as we would know it. So they're not going to be out in that wind. Why would they be out in the wind? They have to preserve their energy for, for doing essential things, not staying warm. We're just going to sit down now. I'll pass the binos around and we're going to see what we can see out there. Ka whaihua te noho me te te tiro haere i te takiwa nei. I te kite era atu i nga tia, e ngā rea hau, ka o rea au i a takite atu. I see a rabbit. You can see a rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> you sure it's a rabbit? Oh no, it's a log. Oh. Yeah, so oh, if you yes. go... Got... You got them? Oh. Oh, I thought they were logs. They're pretty still. So Dave, how long has it taken you to get this, uh, to, to gain this knowledge? Yeah, I've been hunting my whole life. My father taught me how to hunt at an early age, like a lot of people. Um, but you're always learning. You never, you never, ever, ever stop learning as a hunter. There's a lot of people, if you don't have a relative or an uncle or, or your dad teaches you how to hunt, then often people don't learn, even though they are keen to learn. So I'm keen to kind of pass that on and use this as a springboard to get people into it. It's an amazing thing that we have this public land there available for all of us to use all year round to go and feed our families and get out there and experience hunting. It's really unique in the world and I've not seen it in, in any other countries that I've visited yet, absolutely. Ko te mahi i nae nei e whakatutuki i tāku i ako ai. E upoko maro ana aho ki te muru i akuhara o muara. Kei te takiwa o Wanganui aho a kei te kete au i e tahitia. Ooh, reload, reload. Tua hemo anō taku kariri. Ko te tuarua tēnei i tēnei rā, ka āwhina mai a Hamish i a au. Māna a hau e tautoko ki te pīrangi tautoko a hau. What one are you? See the front one of the mob, the very front one? Oh! Can I get up? I think you've gone just in front of there. Reload, reload. Au we ko te tua tori tēnei. So stay on, oh, he's just turned the top of the back and just squeeze that off. Ooh, it's gone to the right again. Yep. The right of the animal. Yeah, the right of the animal. So it went in front of him, right in the throat. Yeah, that's a hit. Ka tahira kua u. I've got no rounds, I've got no rounds left. Engari kaore e mati. Ah, kua pauhoki aku kariri. 
ka uru mai a Hamish ki te whakaoti e tāku i timata ai. E mate kere ana a hau, kaore te tia e mate i a au. I think we need a zero check that rifle. You okay? That was pushing hard right. Kaore au te mauri tau, hei tā Hamish me te tiro takupu, mā tēnā pia e tau ai te mauri. I think maybe we'd do a zero check with that in the morning or something yeah, and just be good. So see I know. what's going on. Because yeah, if you if in the back of the mind in the back of your mind you're thinking, oh, is my ruffle on or is it not? Yeah. Next time you take a shot, that's going to come into your thought process, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Hamish. No, no worries. Ah, oh, yay! Let's go over and check them <laughs> out, eh? Yeah. Yep. So pull what's left of that head back. Oh, okay, Tera. Ko hoki ano māua ko takupu, ko Dave ki te mahi, i te māharahara a hau ki aku he ina nahi. Nō reira, me whakatika tika i tēnei rā. So it's 50-50 here, last night's hunt, it could have been me or it could have been my rifle, so let's see what it was. Can you see the diamond that makes up the, the white diamond in the middle? The left hand corner of that diamond, that is going to be the point I want you to fire at. <laughs> now that's a rookie move. One up the chamber. Okay, on this um, next shot too. Yeah. Disturb your position as little as possible when you go to recycle. Okay, I can tell you right now, yeah. uh, there's nothing wrong with the rifle. <laughs> That's a frigate. That, that is a really, really, really good group. Okay. That is sub-inch at 100 metres. Right. It's right where you want it. It's absolutely sp spot on zero. Can you see that? Because no. now we know it's not the rifle. So now we know it's probably um, nerves or buck fever, as they call it, which is perfectly acceptable, you know, every, every, everybody will get it at some stage. Don't think of it as a broad target, think of it as a pinhead, and you're trying to hit that pinhead. Okay, then everything, that'll focus you in okay. to make that good shot. So I can't blame the rounds. I couldn't do much. I can't blame my rifle. So the only thing left to blame is me. <laughs> okay to fight, it's all about learning. Thank you, Dave. Nā mihi to you. No problem. It's awesome. I feel just that a bit more confident, that knowledge to add to my kite, and I look forward to putting it into practice. Yeah, best of luck with your hunt. It's uh, tough with the cameras the other way. Yeah. yeah. Bit more pressure. Yeah, guys. <laughs> you put the pressure on. <laughs> Ko tahi ano te wā e wātea ai au ki te pupuhi tia. Kaore i tawhiti i konei. So I've learnt heaps this weekend with the Sands Network and I'm ready to put it all into practice and hopefully get some kai at the end. I think what I'm doing is I'm focusing too much on the end result. I need to focus on each step to get to the end result. But I've got my babe here with me today. He's going to let me take the reins and lead the hunt and he's here to back me up. I've even got some camo paint here. Camo out. E hara i te mea me mau panikanohi, hioi anō ki te āwhina mai tēnei mā te aha i te whakamātou. Dark is down the bottom. Kate fai mawa ko kom i te pikareka i tēnei rā. I hari a mai te pikareka ki Aotearoa i te takiwa o te tau ko tahimano e waru rau e ono te kau. Kei te rongo a hau i te taumaha, me whai tia a hau ki te rongo i nei tia i a koe e kore e mau i a koe. I nga hoki e rima te kau kiromita i te haura te tere o te oma, me pehea hoki e mau ai i te tangata. Good work, well done. Yeah. <laughs> so I did it. 
That was that um, pinpoint, you know, how when Dave, that last akuranga he gave me, put that pinpoint onto the deer. So that's what I was focus, focusing on. And the breathing, I did the breathing thing where you know, I was um, much more calm and relaxed. And shot placement, I need to go home for a rest now. Are you going to carry it for me? No. <laughs> no. Kua mama ake i naia nei, taku haere i ngā hiwi nei. I te mea, kua mau au i tētahi tia. Ka nui hoki, nā akoranga i tēnei mutunga wiki. A ka mau tonu e au i nei mā tauranga, a haere ake nei. Finally got my tia, what a huge weekend. Thanks to Sands, Dave, Hamish for an awesome weekend. Lots of mā tauranga. And thanks to my babe for being by my side for this hunt. It's been awesome. Cool. Oh, well, we better get this cleaned up and take it home to the girls. And we'll catch you next week on Hunting with Tui.